hello guys welcome to my channel in today's video i'll teach you how to calculate npv that is the net present value as a financial manager in making investment decisions npv is one of the capital investment techniques that is used to thoroughly evaluate two or more projects to know which is viable and which is not. So NPV is important to a financial manager in making investment decision. So we'll be going into the definition of NPV. NPV means net present value. NPV is simply gotten by first discounting all future cash flows from an investment project at the chosen discount rate and subtracting it from the initial cost of the project and the value is called NPV. The decision rule for NPV. If NPV is positive, the project should be accepted. If NPV is negative, the project should be rejected. If NPV is zero, you may accept or reject it. Now, when is NPV positive and when is NPV negative? NPV is positive when the total present value is greater than the initial cash flow. And NPV is negative when the total present value is less than the initial cash flow. This is the first question. George and Co. Limited is considering a capital investment proposal costing 750,000 naira. The corporation's cost of capital is 12% and the estimated cash flows from the proposals are given as follows. Year 0 to year 5 and in various cash flows. You are required to determine the net present value of the project and advise the management of George and Co. Limited appropriately. So this is how to solve it. You first of all put down the heading, which is the name of the company, then followed by evaluation of project using NPV method. It shows you the method, it shows them or anybody the method you used for year zero, the cash flow was 750,000 Naira. Year one, we just fill it up. Now I'm done filling it up. We are going into calculating the discounted cash flow. How do we calculate this? The formula for discounted cash flow is written below here. 1 over 1 plus the rate, close bracket, the date or the year, that is N. N is the year. So if we are in year 1, the N will be 1. If we are in year 5, N will be 5. So our rate is 12%, which is here, which is written down here. And we should also know that 12% is also 12 over 100. So we are not going to just put 12% as the rate here. We will convert it before we add it to 1. So 12 over 100 give us 0 0.12. 1 plus that 0 0.12 is what we are going to solve. So 0 0.12 plus 1 is 1. 0.12 and remember it has a base to power n and n signifies our zero because we are here zero now so it's going to be 1.12 raised to power zero that is one don't forget our one over so one over one is one so our discounted cash flow for year zero is one. To find our discounted cash flow for year one, we'll do the same thing we did in year 
himself. So, but it's just that the only difference is that n will no longer be zero but one. The rate is still the same. So, in the rate we got, after adding this two, we got 1.12. 1 so, 1.12 1 raised to power 1. That is 1.12. So, it's going to be 1 over 1.12. 0 0.8928. So, we'll put it here. 0 0.8928 you can actually approximate it because of the 5 at the back of the 8 so it becomes 0 0.8929 so the next one is for year 2 500,000 cash flow we will still do the same thing the only difference is that N will no longer be 1 or two so you have to do this yourself and fill it up now I'm done calculating for the other years we are going into calculating for the present value and the formula is below here that is cash flow times the discounted cash flow so for each so for each year we multiply the cash flow with the discounted cash flow so you bring your calculator and you multiply 750,000 naira times 1.0000 which gave us the same amount so the next is year one, 300,000 times 0 0.8929267870. For the second year, 500,000 times 0. 972398600 the third year 400000 multiplied by 0 0.71188 284 Two eight four seven twenty. That's how you do for the remaining year. So I'm done multiplying for each year. This is what you get. If you don't get this, maybe you're wrong somewhere. And don't forget in your discounted cash flow, you're free to approximate. I approximated this, this, this. I think everything here approximated. The next thing is to sum this up, excluding this, just this, this, and this. So let's sum it up. So I got a sum total of 1,135,030 naira after summing all this. That is its total. So that's what you're going to put down here. And like I said earlier, I told you, when you want to find your NPV, you have to subtract this initial capital from the total of the present value to know if your NPV is negative or positive. So we are going to calculate our NPV and the formula is present value of cash outflow minus the present value of cash inflow and this is it this is the present value of cash outflow and the present value of cash inflow so
So let's see what the difference is. So this is the difference. This is our NPV. So we're told in the question to advise, we've gotten our NPV, so now we are to advise the management. Okay? We should advise them if they should accept or reject the project. So our decision rule, decision rule, now, the present value of cash outflow is greater than the present value of cash inflow. This is the difference. So this means that the NPV is positive. The NPV, NPV is positive. George and Co. Limited should accept the project because it's viable. You can also say George and Co. Limited should accept the project because the NPV is positive so whichever way you want to put it but the key word should be there that is the npv being positive that is it and you must address the company because you are advising them so their name should be there george and co limited and the why and the reason why they should accept the project which is because the NPV is positive. So those are the keywords that must be in your decision rule. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe.